Hello and welcome back to our HRT questions part two. So now we're going to cover some of the questions that we didn't get to last time around. And then, so I'm, I'm just going to throw out a few things, um, uh, questions that we've had back from um, some of the women in our community. So one woman um, fed in a question around, if I take HRT, will it cause me to gain weight? Ah, uh, that's, yeah, really good question that I get asked a lot. And there is no evidence that HRT will make you gain weight. Women do commonly gain weight as they go through the menopause for a number of reasons, but it's not the HRT that's doing it. Okay, brilliant. And so next question is, and we, we, we hear this a lot, uh, I think every workshop we've given, Claire, we've had this question, um, and we've seen this a lot in the me media. Does HRT cause breast cancer? So that's the $92 million question that so many women worry about. And it stops that the worry about breast cancer stops a lot of women from taking HRT. But if I can be really reassuring and say that the vast majority of women who take HRT will not get breast cancer, the risk of breast cancer is really, really small. And actually the risk of breast cancer is far greater if you're overweight or your body mass index is over 30, or if you drink two units of alcohol a night, which if you think about it is a reasonable sized glass of wine, it's a double gin and tonic, it's a pint of beer, that has a greater risk than taking combined HRT. And actually the study that was done that showed that was done using older synthetic hormones. And there is evidence emerging that the bioidentical and um, body identical hormones that we've just talked about are associated with a lower risk of breast cancer also. So, um, you know, I just think there is a small risk that is linked to the number of years that you've taken HRT for, but it is very low. The other important thing to know is that if you take HRT under the age of 50, it's unlikely to significantly increase your risk of breast cancer at all. And if you've had a hysterectomy and you only need estrogen only HRT, then there's little or no increased risk of breast cancer at all. So it's really putting the risk in perspective of other lifestyle choices and, you know, for example, exercise reduces your risk of breast cancer again. So it's making the right lifestyle choices. It's understanding the evidence and how it applies to you as an individual. Um, but the risk is very small. OK, that's great, Claire. Thank you. And then uh, another question has come in and blood clots have been in the media a lot in relation to mm. COVID. Question again around um, does HRT cause blood clots? So the risk of blood clots with HRT is very low and it only applies to oral HRT, so HRT tablets. But for most women, that risk will still be really low. Um, if you have estrogen through your skin, so that's transdermal estrogen as either gel, patch or spray, there is no change to your risk of blood clots. So it doesn't increase your risk. So, yes, very small increased risk with oral, but the risk is still low. Transdermal doesn't affect your risk at standard doses. Yeah, that's great. Claire. That's really, really clear. Now, um, a friend of mine said the other day that um, she was she was advised um, by someone in the medical profession to not take HRT because it only delays the inevitable. Is, is that fact or myth? Yeah, no, that's another common myth. Um, and another reason why people don't take it as well. Um, no, so we don't think that HRT presses the pause button on your menopause. It just treats the symptoms as you're experiencing them. So when you decide to stop HRT, you will feel at that age how you would have felt with or without HRT. I hope that makes sense because it's quite it's quite difficult, isn't it, to appreciate that, yeah, the take home message is it does not press the pause button. Yeah, so it just helps you manage your symptoms. It doesn't delay them. You're exactly. not delaying the inevitable, so to speak. No, that's absolutely right. And, you know, for most symptoms are going to last seven or eight years. Well, on average, some people obviously a shorter time. 
but there are some people, some women who their symptoms just do go on and on. So every time they stop HRT, their hot flushes will come back. It is a minority. The vast majority of women will be fine. Um, but yeah, there's a minority of women who it just lasts on and on. So I've got women in my clinic in their 60s, in their 70s, a few women in their 80s who are still having hot flushes. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. But taking HRT to help them then. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, now I know we've only time for a couple more questions and we've got lots more that we go through. So I think we'll have another session where we go through the rest of the questions. But I think one of the key ones is around um, taking testosterone. Um, so when would you consider recommending testosterone as a treatment for one of the women that you would see in your clinic, Claire? Mm, okay. So testosterone is also made by our ovaries. So our ovaries make about 50% of our body's testosterone. So a lot of people don't realize that women do have testosterone in their blood as well as estrogen. So that's the first thing to say. Testosterone levels usually slowly decline from your 30s rather than dropping off a cliff, which is what estrogen can do. And it's really interesting for some women that seems to be really important and for others it doesn't seem to make too much difference so testosterone isn't licensed well testosterone therapy isn't licensed for women in this country but we can prescribe it off license and it is recommended by the national institute of clinical excellence for women who are struggling with their libidos, women who have a low sex drive um, that hasn't got better from taking HRT. So I think the answer to your question is it really varies from individual to individual. Um, some women take conventional HRT, that's the estrogen with or without the progestogen, and they feel great and they feel that's it, they're sorted. There are some women who still feel there's a missing bit of the jigsaw. Maybe their libido's still not come back. Um, they're just not feeling on it. They feel that they've lost energy, mental sharpness, um, and HRT hasn't taken them as far as they need to go in terms of getting that back. And that's when testosterone can fill the gap, primarily for libido, but it can also help with um, mood and concentration also. So I, th I think it really varies. It's really difficult to generalize. Some women want to start it with their HRT. Other women prefer to wait. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's yeah. difficult to generalize. Consistently said throughout this interview, as you do and all of the brilliant content that you've written on the website is that every woman's experience of the menopause is really individual to her. And that's why it's so important to, to get a recommendation that's right for you because it's, you know, you can't really generalize um, about it. Just one last question then about testosterone. It does require a higher degree of oversight and care, doesn't it? My understanding from you is it requires some more blood tests and monitoring. Yes, no, absolutely. So you really have to commit if you're going to take it. So um, I follow British Menopause Society guidance that um, suggests taking a blood test before you start testosterone, because some women will have naturally raised testosterone levels. And for those women, um, if you then add in testosterone, it's less likely to work. And you're also more likely to get side effects like acne, um, hairs on the face, um, a rarer side effect is hair loss. So you do have to be careful with the dosing. Um, I then check a blood test um, six weeks to three months after women have started testosterone to make sure that the level's increased, but it's not gone over a normal level of testosterone for women. And then I then check blood tests depending on how that blood test, so usually about six months and then a year, um, depending on how things are going. Claire, last question for today then is, and uh, it's quite an important question that's very front of mind for a lot of women. If they do decide to go down the HRT route, mm. how long does it typically take for the benefits to kick in? For some women, they feel instantly better. Um, but for others, it can take six weeks. It can take up to three months for things to stabilize and for symptoms to improve. It rarely takes as long as three months. It usually is a bit quicker than that. And if somebody's really not feeling better at three months, and I would suggest going back and looking at the dose, 
um, and maybe a dose change needs to occur. Okay, great, Claire. I think that's really, really helpful guidance for um, women to have at the back of their mind if they are starting to um, take HRT. Thanks very much, Claire. Uh, that was extremely helpful. And unfortunately, we've run out of time and we have a lot more questions. So we'll record another session where we'll go through the rest of the questions that we have. But one of the questions that's been raised is around the alternatives to HRT. And of course, there are alternatives to HRT as well. And you've written a load about that and it's up on our website. So um, at our, one of our upcoming sessions, we'll cover the rest of the HRT questions. But Claire will also talk about what are the non-HRT alternatives that are available to women? Because at the end of the day, this is all about empowering women with the evidence and information so that they can make the choices that are best for them. So thanks very much for joining us today.